night in the advanced group, the judging was done uh, by a guest judge from the Photographic Society of America. So we, we didn't, our, our judges are doing uh, the intermediate and basic classes. So um, let me see here, I need to share my screen. All right, that's looking like a screen. All right, so we're going to start off with the uh, basic class. And uh, I don't like that name. It just, it doesn't ring true. So if somebody volunteers to come up with a better and more appropriate name, we'll consider it. Um, we used to call it uh, the novice group. Yeah, I'm not even sure that's... Uh, well, I don't know. With a name like that, I guess they'll they'll encourage people to get out of it. <laughs> uh, all right, we're gonna go quick scan through all the images here, and uh, so this is the basic group. There are fifteen images. I'm gonna stop that for a second. Fifteen images. Uh, there will be four place winners from the judges. So uh, let me start over so we can see the title here and I'll just let them go. Okay, so now we'll go through them and uh, each judge is going to comment on three images from this group. So we'll have a total of nine commentaries. Um, Blue Bonnets, Wallpaper Dreams. Oops, come on, don't do that automatically. Uh, Pansy painting. Brutalist post office. Yeah, That's I was going to be Charles. Yeah, I was going to talk about that. Yeah, I, I just, you know, probably six months ago, I wouldn't have known what a brutalist was. 
now I do. And I, I, I swear, I, I, I know I've seen this post office. I think this is the one on Burleson Road, maybe. But um, I think as a night shot, this has really brought out the, you know, really let the light, you know, bring out the, the, the forms of the, of the architecture here, it, you know, gave us these leading lines all leading up to the, the brightest spot, of course, is the post office, as it should be if we're doing the post office. And, uh, you know, I, I used to think that this was probably, this was too much, you know, empty space in front of the, in front of the post office, but I like it. I, I, I like the reflections of the light, you know, we get us a little more complete, um, gradation, you know, of the, of the tones without it, you know, it's kind of, you know, either on or off. And so I really liked it for that. Um, I really couldn't, um, uh, uh, you know, and, and I like the way that the, you know, the dark sky looks kind of blank, but I think because it's so blank, it also lets the, you know, lets that top edge of the, you know, of the building show. If there was actually some light there, it, you know, if the, the, the line would probably just disappear. And uh, I like the edge up there. So I, good job to the, to the photographer here. I, I think uh, uh, night shots and, and architecture for this one, this is the way to go. Good job. Uh, help me out. So, what does brutalist mean? Well, brutalism. Brutalism was kind of this uh, um, mode to basically use concrete. Okay, we're building shapes and and everything out of concrete, and I think this is a really good. Uh, a really good example of a smaller building. Some brutalist buildings were huge, but you know this is a good example of a brutalist uh, architecture, um, all you know, all concrete and little steel. Uh, we're just showing showing how concrete can be can be used in building. Um, and uh, you know, it was very popular for a while, and and then kind of fell off. People were like, "Gosh, concrete everything," but. I think this is a, this this building in particular. I think shows off how uh, it was how it could be used properly to you know to really give us some shapes and textures. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, next is Stalker, and that's oh, uh, yeah. I'm going to talk to that one. Um, I think this is a real interesting shot. I mean, it's done very well with all the cropping is just perfect for the focus on the center of attention uh the color mapping uh with the orange ears and the green map out really well and you're just wondering what that cat's going to do next he's got that stare in his eye looking at you like uh oh i'm going to do something but i'm not sure what so there's a little mystery there to the picture um, very well done. Uh, the only thing I would change that's distracting to me is if you could have moved slightly to the left so that that uh, out of focus piece of grass would have been in the middle of his nose, that would have been a perfect shot then. Other than that, I can't see anything wrong with it. I really like this picture. Next is replacing the deck at the dock. Hickory dickory. Yeah, and that's me. Can you all hear me? Yes. Yes. All right. Good. Um, Unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, all right. Um, great, you know, <coughs> capture of the moment. We got this guy sitting there. He's Looks like he's rebuilding the ship. Um, so what I would have done a little differently, maybe moved a little more to the right, that white boat on the right, kind of get that out of the frame. And maybe used a wider um, aperture, kind of blur that background out so not the whole thing is in focus and just focus on the, uh, the guy there uh, rebuilding that boat and really the only other thing is maybe if he was kind of you saw his face but then again I guess the hat without seeing his face it's kind of a mystery you know 
who is it? What is he doing? Um, so yeah, and maybe maybe just a little tighter crop. Okay. Next is randomness. Afternoon calm, Dennis. So this is mine. Uh, I think this photo has the potential uh, of being a really good shot. Uh, it's got all the elements of intrigue and you can feel the calmness of the afternoon and the couple sitting there at the bottom. It looks like they're very enjoying the, the, the silence and the, just sitting there watching everything. I think the execution of the photo and the, the follow-up uh, needs to be a little improved on. I would have eliminated some of the sky to uh, probably down to where the light starts shining down on the focus. And because I feel like the couple is way down at the bottom of the picture and they're not as strong as they should be. And I feel like they're the center point. The other thing needs to be done would be to increase the, sh the shadows so you get more details within the shadows. Uh, so that may mean bracketing shots and blending together and a lot of extra post, post uh, work, but it has the potential of being a good shot. Uh, just the execution needs to be worked on a little bit. Okay. Next is a view of downtown Austin at Lou Neff Point. And, uh, oh, be excuse me, down to before sunrise. I left that part out. And uh, Steve. I was going to, I'm doing the next one, the one of sunrise, kind of same okay. picture. All right. Then we have. Uh, like waking up from a dream, Charles? Yeah, um, I, I really enjoyed this one. I mean, I, I like the way the uh, the stems, you know, all you know, all led right up into the picture. That that light color um, just just pulled pulled everything up into the the line of these look like poppies to me, um, and the you know, and the the poppies kind of formed this this leading line across the screen and up to the up to the top left. Um, and I like the way it was done, um, but it it just it, you know it looked to me like the like the brightest you know I mean it looked like we were going up to the to the last flower, but it looks like the brightest flower, the one that gets your attention, is the next to last one, and the the whole thing has got this kind of kind of dark vignette on it, and I think you know with a little less vignette, you know, and and brightening up the last. Um, you know, if the, if, if the brightest spot was that last, last flower there, I think, I think that's be, that, you know, that would really have satisfied me, but it left me kind of disappointed for some reason. Um, uh, it, it still is a great shot. Um, but yeah, a little, a little post, a little post work. I think, I think I'd be happier with it, but, uh, um, yeah, obviously, uh, keep at it. I, I like it. Um, give me more. Okay. Next is Fulton Shrimpers. And, so, uh, this is mine again. Okay. Um, so I've been spending a lot more time down in the Port A area and the Fulton area and, and uh, trying to get some of these morning shots. And, and it's difficult sometimes because you end up with that. Uh, you never can predict what the forecast is going to be for the sunrise. Is it going to be cloudy? Is it going to be nice colors in the sky? But uh, this one has the potential. I mean, he has the repetition of shapes and the interesting rigging of the shrimp boats. Um, again, I would have cropped it a little bit tighter, so less sky because there's not much up in the sky that's really very interesting. Um, and also, it, it just seems to be a little bit out of focus. Maybe that's just the uh, old paint jobs on the rainbow or something like that, but it just seems to be a little bit out of focus and, and could be just a little bit brighter. You may have to take a longer exposure or do some more post-processing on it. But other than that, 
uh, good job. Sweet Caroline. All right, that's me. So from the title, I'm assuming this might be a Carolina Wren. I'm not sure, but um, whoever took the shots, they got their, their stuff down. Everything's sharp where it needs to be sharp. You got a little catch light in the eyes. Um, background is blurred out nicely. Um, so you, you got some light and some shadow on the, the backside of the, the stick branch there. Um, the only thing I could say is maybe slightly crop in a little bit more. And, um, you know, you got, you got your stuff down, just start playing with that light. Um, one theme I've, with some of my critiques tonight, um, there's a saying, um, light illuminates, shadows define, start playing with the light um, and how it falls. I know it's all, nat this is natural light, um, but that's really all I could, you know, could say on this one. I, I think it's great, sh nice sharp shot. Okay. And uh, let's see, next is Shy Sunflowers. It's not all black and white. Okay, amazing. Two of the same pictures from different photographers. How could that possibly happen? Anyway, this is uh, a view of Austin downtown sunrise from Lunette Point. Yeah, this is this is mine as well. Oh, I didn't realize there were two different photographers. I thought it was the same. No, it's not. Um, oh, another weak attempt at humor. <laughs> All right, so you know this is an. Ex Excellent example of making the photo instead of taking the photo. Some planning went into this, or it could have just been dumb luck that they were there when the same sun came up and they were able to align the sun perfectly between those two buildings. Um, so I, kudos to whoever took this, you planned it. I use a lot of planners, photo pills being one, not only can you plan your Milky Way shots and your star astrophotography. You could also line up where the sun's going to be, when it's going to be. Um, so kudos. Um, only thing, a uh, few things I got is one, maybe take, have taken the shot just as it was peeking up through those two buildings. So it's not such right in the center, um, what was that? Was it Manfred Mann that had something about looking looking into the sun or something, some song, but I'm just <laughs> stuck with looking straight at it. Um, Bruce but, originally, Manfred Mann covered it. Oh yeah, that's right, you're right, yes. Um, and then Bruce, it never went anywhere with Bruce, That's and, but it put Manfred Mann on the map. But anyway, yeah, and so it's not directly in the center of the frame. Um, exposure, I mean, you got that starburst. Um, I know that sometimes isn't easy. Um, you know, and some people would maybe say, you know, those cranes over there to the left, maybe kind of cloning them out or something. That's what I would have done, but um, anyway, uh, kudos, whoever took this shot, you know, you were there at the moment. Um, you know, might have been a little bit nicer if there were some clouds in there too, but, you know, sometimes in Texas, we don't have much clouds. Okay. Next is shells. And... Uh... 
Yeah, I was going to talk about that one. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I like the, you know, the, the combination combination here. Uh, you know, we, we kind of a, have a swirl going on, uh, uh, you know, in the composition. And then, of course, the, the shells themselves are got this swirl thing going on. I, I like that. I thought that was great. Uh, this worked in has a lot of good tonality in it. Um, good, uh, good, good range of tonality. Uh, I think the thing that bugged me the most was that, you know, the, the, the brightest, you know, the brightest shelves were right up front where they're all very out of focus. And the sharpest point was like the darkest shell. And, you know, I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that may have been on purpose, but it, it just kind of bothered me. Um, you know, uh, you know. Obviously, it's a it's a set piece, uh, a still life, if, as it were. So you can arrange it however you want. I just um, I would have liked to see the focus point be, you know, be closer to the brightest point in the in the image. So, but still, I mean, that's it's a good image. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, that concludes our romp through the first round. Uh, so let's see what the judges decided. I'll make sure I get the right choice here. Okay, so we have four places, starting with honorable mention. We have Sweet Caroline, Donna Smith. Next is a view of Austin downtown, Sunrise by Vasu Catalagier. I hope I said that close to right. Catalagier, perhaps. Is Vasu here tonight? Okay. Brutalist Post Office, second place, Jose Rios. Our new members are coming on strong. And first place is stalker, Donna Smith. Very interesting photograph. Well done. So who's the stalker, the cat or Donna? <laughs> yes. She's stalking the Donna. stalker. <laughs> yeah. The prey, the hunter becomes prey. Um, we also have the People's Choice Awards. So We have three winners there. Uh, the bronze award goes to Susan Park for Like Waking Up From a Dream. Pretty colors. It is kind of a dreamy look, isn't it? Silver goes to Donna Smith for Stalker. And the gold goes to Donna Smith for Sweet Caroline. I think Donna, Donna's making her move on that uh, intermediate class. It does, do, are any of the winners want to say anything about their photos? Donna, tell us about Sweet Caroline. Can we hear you? Can't hear you, Donna. Yeah, you're not muted, but we can't hear you. <laughs> I think she's cursing. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> That's my job. That's my job. Well, Donna, all I can say is it, it's typical of your work. It's just beautiful. Uh, Excellent. Nice sharp detail, like Steve said. 
this is uh, what you want a bird on a stick to look like. It's great. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Does anybody else hear from that one, from that group? I don't Donna's going to say the same thing about Stalker. <laughs> yep, absolutely. She says her computer sucks. Okay. Uh. Is Susan Park here? All right. If Susan's not here, then we'll move on to the intermediate group. So we have 25 images in this group, which means there will be seven awards, three places and four honorable mentions. And uh, let us go through them. Don't get caught. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to talk about that, this picture. And, and Let me go. Uh, We're going to go through them all at once, and then uh, we'll come oh, back. OK. All right. all right. Sorry, I forgot. Yeah. Like me, brain's only good for five minutes. Absolutely. I think I just missed ours. Are you on now? Not exactly, but kind of. I got no way. This helped me deal with that frustration. Things changed when I tried ZipRecruiter because it works like a free personal recruiter. ZipRecruiter sent me great jobs. Can everybody mute, please? Some companies even invited me to apply. Started a new job last week. This still helps. Go to ZipRecruiter.com and put ZipRecruiter to work for you. New York agents are back in business, and this market is mission impossible. Okay. All right. Before we get started, 
Everybody check your microphones, make sure they're muted if you're not one of the judges. Okay. No, oh, this is a photo. All right, so we're gonna go through them now with comments by the judges. Make sure I've got my list here. And so once again, intermediate class, don't get caught. So uh, my first comment about this immediate group is like, wow, I'm glad I'm not in it because I couldn't, don't want to compete with them. These photos are just excellent and they're just getting better and better every, every month. Um, I like this photo because it, it has a, a mystery about it. The title says, don't get caught, but their eyes are looking somewhere else from the person that looks like that's about to catch them. Uh, and the execution of the lighting and the texture is just excellent. I mean, you, you see their eyes, you see the brightness, but you wonder what are they looking at? Are they looking at something else other than this, whatever person is back there in the background? So I like the execution. It tells a story. It has a mystery to it. Um, and then uh, the overall execution of the picture as well. My only complaint was that bright light over on the left side. I'm not sure it adds anything to the picture, but other than that, I really like this, this picture and the way it was done and the way it was cropped and the overall execution. Okay. Next is Good Mother. Jordan Coldyard. Charles? Uh, yep. Uh, I'm waiting for it to refresh. <laughs> but ah. uh, but honestly, uh, um, I, when I first saw it, I was like, gosh, that, that looks really distinctive. And so, of course, I Googled it. And, uh, and I saw a whole bunch of, of, of Joel, Jordan Coldyard uh, pictures, you know, out on like... Uh, you know, stock photo, various stock photo locations and uh, Pixel and uh, uh, Flickr. Um, and then I realized that those were actually images of, of it in an earlier incarnation, as in not nearly as decrepit as this, you know, old, but not falling, not almost falling down like this one. And uh, so I, I, you know, I regarded this one as a really good, you know, um, uh, good job of taking a known image and you know and and giving us a new version um it's a it's a different angle than the ones you typically see um usually the other ones were like at a, at a sharper angle and trying to give us some uh, trying to there, there's the, the the grain elevator is is cut out of most of them this one you know gives us a good shot of the the the, the roof just peeling up um you know all the uh, the, the front wall looks like it's about to fall down and, the, and uh, uh, we got all these, li you know, lines going all over the place, the, the mismatched windows, the, the, you know, the boards, the, the boards that are barely covering the windows anymore, uh, the gravel road and it's, you know, it's and it's uh, uh, the tracks in it. And uh, the you know the weeds and the and and, uh, and the shrubbery and trees just just giving this wonderful impression of just decrepitude, you know you couldn't have staged this if you wanted to, you know it's that kind of thing, and then the 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 you know the tonality of the of of the image you know it, it's got the full range, uh, really emphasizes the uh, you know the building itself. And uh, and just frames it properly. I, I think this is a, a, an excellent image, and uh, um, I'm not sure what else to say about it. I, I'm I'm like, uh, um, good job. Do more. I want to see more. Thanks. Yeah, I think what Charles is trying to say is that timing is everything. But sometimes you have to wait thirty or forty years. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, I, my suspicion is, and I, I think I've seen some of these in, 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 in competitions in the past where uh, somebody has gone out and, and shot 
uh, had, and shot something that's been done before, you know, and, you know, and in many cases, you know, I mean, it's, it, it's, you know, they're trying to take a new twist on it. And I liked, I thought this was one of the better twists, you know, most of them, you know, the building was, was in similar shape to, to where it was. And we were trying to just get different lighting or different, or a different angle. This one, we got our time machine going here and, 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 and we really got a, a great twist on it. I thought. Thanks. Sorry. Cool. Uh, next is rings. Followed by wink. And wink. That'll be me. All right. So these are got two great horn outlets. One appears to be winking at the photographer. Um, I'm going to venture to say this is somewhere around Mills Pond. Um, anyway, I kind of like the way the branch and the leaves kind of frame them. Uh, you know, to get this shot, it's really difficult. It's almost like a jungle out there. So to get them popped up like that and to see them, you know, kudos there at the right place at the right time. Um, now for the bad, uh, one, I think it was, looks like it was probably one of these gray days like today, not much light, a um, little soft focus on the faces, um, and the eyes probably maybe from a little denoise, um, you know, Maybe a, no, I don't think a tighter crop, but um, you know, it's hard in wildlife to get the perfect, you know, they talk about separation, rule of odds, you know, you gotta be patient. You got two instead of one, um, there's not much separation, but you know, overall just to get out there and get this shot, you know, kudos, whoever did it. So, yeah. And, you know, could have been better if there was some sunlight, um, play with those shadows and the highlights, um, but yeah. Okay. That's so it. Some tough lighting conditions. Yeah. Okay, next is a call from Texas. I'll just, nobody's commenting on this one, but I just, I love this, this image and this kind of image. I think it's really cool. Tunnel. Reclining pepper. Somebody got their Edward Weston on. Morning dew. Olivia's inner thoughts. No escape room. Yeah, that's me again. Um, I think it re works really well as a black and white. Um, I guess these are, you know, before Godzilla grows up. <laughs> um, great use of um, really shallow depth of field. Um, the cage is kind of blurred out, you know, kind of goes from sharp to blurred. The, the background, you can't really tell where it is. It is, is it in some illegal pet trade, you know, were these seized or whatever? Um, but, um, the, you know, the, the faces, well, the two of them are, are sharp. Yeah, 
crop is just just right. Um, you know, the, the only thing I could see is maybe if that light wasn't so bright, but you know, other than that, uh, I think it's an excellent black and white. Yeah, I really just, like the title. Yeah. Certainly imparts a mood to this. Next, Mexican hat. Charles. Yes. Yeah, I was going to talk about that. Um, I, you know, I, I really appreciate, you know, uh, when, uh, I mean, I've just, I just bought a macro lens myself, you know, not too long ago. And so I really appreciate it when, you know, when uh, someone takes the time to just get up close and, and really in the face of, uh, of, of a flower like this. Um, I think we, you know, I just, I love the way the the you know the patterns develop in the in the parts of the flower. I'm not even going to try and name the parts. I'm not great at that, but I, I, I really. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, I, I just I just like the like the way the the patterns are so distinct and and kind of frame the center. The only thing that bugged me here, and and this may have been a choice, um, you know, of the photographer, but I think that bugged me was that it's just the just the real center of the flower just seemed a little soft, you know, and and this may and you know we're we're talking really close here, so we're we're probably having trouble getting depth of field, you know, uh, you know, completely right, you know, this may have been a choice to drop the depth of field a little back off of the tip so we could get more of it, more of the flower sharp. But it would have been nice if the center was was sharp as well, because it just you know, to me anyway it just just looked a little soft. Um, but otherwise, I mean, I really, I really can't criticize it. I, now I would like I would like some feedback from the other macro photographers whether what, what they would have done. You know, would they have done some focus stacking to do that? Would they have backed off on the, you know, backed off on the on their uh, made a little. Uh, a little tighter uh, aperture to get a little more depth of field on it or, or how they would have handled it because uh, you know it, it, it's, it's a great image. Well, from my point of view, uh, I mean, I do, I do moderate amount of focus stacking, but the only, like you said, the only part is that I would like that center of the flower to be sharp. And if that took focus stacking, I would add one more, but as far as the the background, the, you know, the farther away stuff, I, I think it's great to have that out of focus because it just makes the front of the flower pop that much more. Yeah, and I agree. I, I, I agree. I have no problem with, with, with any of the rest of that. I think the, I really like the way the colors, you know, the darker colors of the petals, but the petals being soft, you know, set off the center of the flower. I thought that was, that was excellent. Um, I think you know. that, um, I think that the, emphasis on the contrast between the black and orange ring of the tiny pieces versus the white center is an appropriate choice by the photographer. Um, the center of, of the white section, which is going to be closest to you, nobody's looking at that. Uh, yes, it is soft, but nobody's looking at that. And given a limited depth of field, I think the appropriate choice was made here. Um, at this angle, different angle, straight on, because you get more of the ring in focus. Those are other choices as well. But here, I, I think if the, I think if the, the the tip was in focus, nothing else would be, and I think that it would lack uh, any interest in that point. My opinion. Okay, yeah. thank you. Point. That was that was what I was looking for. I mean, I think I think when I looked at it, it was this was like an f eight, and so I was wondering if, you know you know dumping it up to you know it's obviously a choice of, of light as well because yeah. you know if you go you know if you go up to like a, you know like f12 or f, f16 you know then you know then you gotta then you have to back off on your uh, on your iso and you may you know get some noise and lose some detail so it's obviously a trade-off i was just kind of wanted some feedback on how that works there, there's yeah. another option um uh, you can back away from your subject, and that will give you a little bit more depth of field. Uh, and then crop. And then you may and have to crop, crop but yeah. But good, good. Yeah, image. Tight, a tighter, 
Yeah, tighter aperture wouldn't help either because you're you're talking hundreds of an inch here for the for the depth of field uh, at this distance. It's yeah. it's not it's not much. So focus stacking or taking what you've got in the field, right? Or or as Mark said, back off and, and try to do something with the geometry of the shot a little bit. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Cool. Uh, next is morning on the jetty. Dennis. So this looks like another one from Port Aransas. Uh, early morning shot. I think it shows very good action, uh, excellent cropping. It tells a good story. Uh, you can just feel the hot, I mean, the cool, humid air, you know, a very still morning because the waves are just not, not moving very much, it looks like. Um, I'm not sure there's much I would say to improve it unless you want to darken the silhouettes of the people a little bit more. Uh, but this is up to the photographer's choice of what he wants to do. But other than that, I like the cropping. Uh, I like the action. Um, and the, the way the people go down is kind of interesting uh, as the jetty goes out. So very good shot. Uh, excellent work. Cool. Next is handrail shadow. Damsel at rest. That is super sharp. <laughs> Heartbreak pond. Rings make you more beautiful. Eye to eye. Outspoken star. Beauty is within. Sand and straw. And I was going to talk about that one. I, I thought we did a really good job here. Uh, the, the photographer just did a really good thing here. You, you know, when I first looked at it, you know, I thought, it, you know, I was thinking, you know, thinking, you know, almost black and white, but the, the shade of the sand and the, you know, and the color of the, of the straw really, it's, it's a split compliment. It's really a, a good choice here. I think that's very well done. I love the, uh, uh, I, I love the patterns in the sand and the organized way, uh, you know, the organized patterns in the sand versus that chaotic, you know, structure of the, of, of the, of the straw and the way that the, the patterns are slightly rubbed out or, or and to completely rubbed out uh, by the, obviously the, the straw blowing in the wind. I, I thought this was very impressive and very well done. Okay. Green and old. Lime greens, ocean blues. Yeah, that's me. Uh, I don't know whose photos this is, but uh, they did an excellent job. Um, I'm assuming this is a macro. Maybe not. I'm not a macro shooter, so I don't know. Uh, the color contrast, the colors, you know, your primary colors there, green and blue work perfectly. The lighting, you got some little highlights and shadows kind of defining all the objects, the whatever the leaves of the plant, the rocks and all that. Um, yeah, there's not really much I would do differently or see them doing differently other than maybe playing 
with some color gels and stuff like that if they were using lighting. But other than that, I think it's an excellent photo. Okay. Wilted flowers. Hunting in the surf. So I'll, I'll comment on this one. Um, my first uh, thing was how sharp and the focus is on the bird, the entire bird, although it is a little softer on the wings, but that's expected with that depth of field. Um, the thing that's really interesting about this photo is that it's totally different than what you typically see the blue herons and the captured. Uh, you usually see them capturing some, something in their mouth or, or something. And I've never seen a picture like this where they're in the surf you know, walking, walking through the wave. Uh, so the timing on this was excellent and, and you just had to be in the right spot and be prepared and take the shot when you got it. And they obviously did an excellent job here. I think the color uh, combination is a little bit different also. It, it feels more pastel, but that all goes very, blends very well together with the light green uh, water and the, the very light blue uh, ocean um, and then the subtle pink there in the bill of the, the bird. So uh, great shot, great cropping, great timing. Um, and these are difficult shots to get. You got to have your system set up and the focus and be ready. Uh, and good job. Okay. All right. That gets us through the second round. And uh, it's time to see what the judges say. So, like I said, there are seven places here. Uh, four of them will be honorable mentions. The first honorable mention is Michael Knox for Green Anol. A sharp look at the that eye there, isn't it? Honorable mention goes to Ronnie Duke for Olivia's Inner Thoughts. Cheryl Callan gets honorable mention for Eye to Eye. Sand and straw, honorable mention goes to Dave Margulis. Third place, don't get caught, Vance Strickland. Second place, Jordan Colyard, Nick Grossman. And first place, Gene Thomas for No Escape Room. That is cool. <laughs> I really like those expressions. Gene, you're you're here tonight. Tell us a little bit about this. Well, it was um, it was a photo that I took a while ago, and I had it just sitting there in in color, and it it just didn't impress me. And as I was looking through some of my photos, I, I turned some to black and white. And this photo started to remind me of like an interrogation room or something like that. Uh, and then, you know, the concept of a, an escape room came to mind. And as I played with the highlights and the shadows, it just kind of got creepier and spookier and then I liked it so much, I said, okay, uh, <laughs> it's time to enter that one in the competition. Well, it's a great choice. I could tell it was not a current fit picture because none of them were wearing masks. But uh, <laughs> other than that, it's, it's really cool. Uh, I just, it makes me think of people, dog eat dog, and everybody trying to get to the top. <laughs> Very good. 
Well, thanks for uh, sharing that with us this evening. It's a, a really great image. Yeah, it was an honor. And going to the people's choice. Once again, three places. The bronze goes to Calvin Poole for Morning on the Jetty. Silver goes to Jordan uh, to, for, to Nick Grossman for the Jordan Coal Yard. It's a really interesting place. I, I guess this is in Europe, England, maybe. Marfa. Where? Marfa. I just Googled it. Oh, this is in Marfa. Really? I missed that when I was there. Well, that's cool. Well, that was that was one of the neat things that I found in Google. I didn't mention that, but. You know, I, I, you know, it's, yeah, you, you go Google Jordan Colyard, you get a bunch of different ones. And, uh, but this one's unique. Good job. Well done. And People's Choice Gold Medal goes to Cheryl Callum for Hunting in the Surf. I believe, uh, Cheryl, are you here tonight? I believe this is a reddish egret. I am here. It is a reddish egret. They're beautiful. Talk to us about this. Uh, this was actually in Florida and I was learning how to use my skimmer pod. So I was laying on my stomach and this guy was fishing and he's in his breeding colors. That's why his beak is so pink. Wow. So are you on the water? No, I'm actually right <laughs> next to the water in the sand. Okay. Like right where the beach was hitting and you kept having to move back because otherwise you were going to get wet. That's a great, <laughs> great angle of view. Thanks. Love it's it. fun. They're fun yeah. to watch. How, how close were you able to get? Um, I had 700 millimeters and I kept having to move back, but yeah. I chased this guy for the longest time. He was all I wanted to photograph that morning. Good choice. Thank okay. you. Congratulations. Well done. Yes. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Last and possibly least, uh, we're going to go to the advanced group. Let's see, I've got to select competition. Okay. And show. And Okay, so we have uh, 18 images. That means there will be five places, two honorable mentions and three place awards. We'll go through them once and then we'll come back for the commentary.
Hey, well, as I mentioned earlier, uh, these images were uh, judged by a uh, judge from the Photographic Society of America. So we're going to go through them once again, and their critique will show up hopefully on the right side. And uh, I'll give everybody enough time they can get through the critique and see what the commentary was.
Okay. Um, any questions anybody has about the judge's commentary? Uh, I actually would like to get some feedback. Maybe I'll wait till you show the winners that'll help you make up your mind, but I'd like some feedback on how this judge performed because they, they, they do want us to let them know. So, uh, it, it seems like this person had a better understanding of what we were trying to do with photos. I, I agree. I, I really, out of all the ones we've had so far, I like this one the best. Agreed. Now we just have to teach him how to spell the word palette. Yeah. I don't know how to tell yeah. him that. <laughs> like it's not even close. It seems like know. a nitpick compared to the other issues. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's I like see. how they did it. I, you know, I don't agree with everything they said, but I like how they did it better than the other ones. Yeah, same. Yeah, agreed. Okay. So we've got the judge's choice here. Five images, two honorable mentions. Uh, honorable mention, Noir, Noir Beauty, Josh Baker. I never would have guessed that was you, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact, that's a cheese grater in front of her face. I was going to ask you what you use, some kind of gobo or something, a cheese grater. Huh? That's it's a cheese grater, yeah. Cool. It really almost looks like a, you know, a veil. Yeah. No, cool. che cheese grater from my eye drawer. Was it, was it a spec photo or one that you got a client? Um, it was me working on some new techniques for a class I'm developing. Uh, next is Hickman's Bridge. This was uh, from Capitol Reef uh, National Park. I was just there a couple of weeks ago. It's a beautiful place. I highly recommend going there. Spectacular scenery and geology. Next is from third place is Joshua Baker, dreaming in a Texas sea. So you got, I guess that's the mermaid theme, huh? Yeah, it's the only uh, blue bonnet photos I took this year. Oh, good job. Uh, Anything tricky about what you had to do to achieve this? Uh, well, it was shot at about 1230 in the afternoon. Oh, um, so oh, there's flat. yeah, so there's three pretty big strobes. It was a flat gray day like there was no sun. So the, the lighting that you see is all mine. Cool. Yeah. It was fun. Second place, Hatham Samarchi Splash. Is Hatham here tonight? I didn't see him earlier. Okay. And first place, Adrift, Dennis Bosserman. I gotta say, that is different and really cool. It was a, a morning when we had fog all day long, and I was driving along the scenic view along the Lake Austin, and I stopped down there, and I saw this can just floating out there in the water, just, and it was just a calm, still day, and I, I took the shot, and I thought, oh, it's okay, and then later on, I played with it and, and cropped it down a little bit more and actually inverted the picture because the, or flipped it for, uh, side to side because I could have the stone spelled correctly that way. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that, cool. that was fun. Yeah, that was a great idea. Good eye for catching that. Okay. And then the people's choice. The 
third place. Uh, this also was at uh, Capitol Reef. And uh, our group was gathered up on this hill and we all realized we were casting some interesting shadows. So I wasn't the only one to grab this shot, but I was very happy with it. Uh, this is bentonite clay, which is the, uh, there's just huge layers of this all over the Colorado Plateau. And this is uh, left over from, you know, volcanic ash that poured onto the earth in prolific amounts. And these layers can be, you know, 100 feet thick or more. So it was really cool looking. The bentonite is really heavy, isn't it? Um, no, well, it, it, it depends if it's got water and it, it absorbs a lot of water, so it can be heavy, but then it dries out and cracks and gives you this very uh, textured look. And if you were just to pick up some of those particles, they, they wouldn't, they're not heavy at all uh, when they're dry, but when it's wet, it's a whole different thing. You do not want to try to drive through that stuff when it's wet. Absolutely. It's clay. <laughs> yep. Okay, silver medal goes to Josh for dreaming in a Texas sea, was it? And the gold medal goes to Hatham Samarchi for splash. Water drop photos can be really incredible. And ladies and gentlemen, that concludes tonight's competition. Congratulations to all the winners. Thank you so much to the judges. You know how much I appreciate it and <laughs> the rest of the club does too. So. I appreciate it because I didn't have to do it. That's the <laughs> biggest appreciation. Well, it's interesting to see if, if you agree with other people's opinions about photos and all that. So it really helps me as a photographer to kind of be a judge every now and then to see, wow, am I off base or am I doing a good job? Or, But I, I found out that judging is very, very personal. <laughs> yep. And so it just depends on the judge and, and the situation. So absolutely. Yeah. Not off base, I'm out of the park. Were there were there no bird photos in the advanced class this time? Yeah, there were a couple. There was were there? Uh, yeah, there was an a owlet. Oh yeah, the owl. Yeah, that's right. And there was a hawk right. too. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I thought it was going to be a first, but yeah. Hawk with right. the chicken foot. <laughs> yeah. He ate the rest of them. <laughs> I know. Oh, right. It had a dead animal. Touch the loved it. That's crazy, crazy, crazy. Gosh, what, what is it with really bird photos? Tonight. Oh, uh, Cheryl, it's just a running joke with me. It don't. It's me being stupid. There's nothing to it. Okay, I thought they were like not allowed, and I just went. <laughs> no, <to> no. <laughs> no, no, no. Josh absolutely... only disallows children and pets. Yeah. Okay. And good to know. Good to know. <laughs> And dead animals. <laughs> no, no, I'm pro dead animals. I'm pro death. I'm pro death. Um, sure. And there's a, a running and there's a running bird on a stick joke that right that obviously is a joke because we got a winner in, uh, on a of a bird on a stick in intermediate, right? Yeah. Basic. Basic. Okay. Intermediate. Yeah. It, either way, yeah. Yeah. No, it's a just winner. a running joke. Sure. If, if you if you can't tell, I I don't shoot any wildlife. <laughs> um, and so it's it's just me being a stick in the mud because I take yeah. pictures of people. Speaking so, of sticks. Yeah, sticks and then the mud and the clay. I was going for some. I'm trying to hit like multiple puns here. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. You need people on a stick, you know? Ooh. Oh, that sounds bad. That's medieval. I, but you like medieval. <laughs> I have some jousting photos that might work for that. <laughs> Next, let's get weird class. <laughs> well, it, it, it does sound like that, like the people on a stick would be a, a, a appropriate for the let's get weird. Yeah. 
pretty much you know, everything. We can recreate that lizard. We can recreate that lizard picture with people. Piled <laughs> 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 on the top of the I, I already thought that lizard was was very film noir sort of as it was. <laughs> you can, yeah. You can cool. with your car photos and do Vlad the Impala. You can yeah. feel the tension in there. Too. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Josh, have you bragged about your latest video you posted? Uh, no, it's not ready for everybody yet. But okay, um, it's all good. Hey, I did post in the comments if you do like brutalist art architecture. There's an amazing, I guess he's it's Yugoslavian, like like World War II monuments it's up in the chat they're really awesome um and it's all like brutalist architecture and anyway it's interesting so where do we find that it's in the chat oh in the it's, chat okay it's yeah it's very just scroll up at the very top right. um i like that kind of stuff i'd love to go photograph them they're very interesting there's like 50 of them um there's a bunch so eastern europe had a lot of that during the communists that were the yeah, they used sign. to call it Russian architecture. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was popular worldwide in the fifties and sixties. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yugoslavia doesn't exist anymore. Well, yeah, I know. And then it kind of the brutalists kind of merged into what they call the international design. So, like the Seagram's building in New York is kind of the the next jumping point from brutalism. Mm. If you really want some interesting, I do. If you ever want to have class in this, I've done. I, I used to teach at Precision, but I haven't taught in like three years. But I did a class on um, like some of the best uh, architectural photographers from like the 40s, 50s, 60s, and they compared them with modern photographers that are working today. Um, it's really interesting. I can give that talk in like 45 minutes if anybody ever wants me to do yeah. that. It's, it's pretty interesting. Sounds like a third Thursday to me. I'm, I'm happy to do it. it yeah, it's it's really cool. Well, um, September's coming yeah. up. There's a uh, there's a documentary on um, Amazon. Oh, and I am blanking on the guy's name right now. Um, but he was like prolific um, architectural photographer, and Ron How I think Ron Howard narrates it. Um, but uh, I'll I'll find the name in a second. Um, but he was shooting like a thousand buildings a year um, wow. in like Southern California. Like you've seen his photos. You just don't, you may not realize that that's who they are. I'll get the name in a second. Hold on. Cause um, yeah. Architecture has a very interesting, like ebb and flow with like whatever culture is popular at the time. And I don't know. I follow a lot of like architectural people that I find interesting. So uh, we're we're looking for a July speaker for the third Thursday in July, but we do have a speaker for the third Thursday in August. Uh, Amy Bowen is a, a Schulman. A, oh, okay, curator. So sorry, Amy sorry, sorry. Amy is a curator at this um, Brisco Center for American History, and she'll talk about the photojournalism photojournalism collection. And I'll be working to get a topic from her, but that's August. So if Am I correct that we do not have a July third Thursday topic now? That's correct. Uh, so when what what what's the date? Fifteenth. Um, okay. third, third Thursday. I think it's the fifteenth. Yeah, that's the fifteenth. Yeah. Are you free then, Josh? The third uh, Thursday. I can I can make myself be free. Okay. There's, <laughs> there's the, um, there's a link. It's on Amazon. It's called Visual Acoustics uh, with Julius Schulman. Um, he was Dustin the one that Dustin Hoffman narrates. Dustin Hoffman, thank you. Um, but yep. he was the one that that shot the the case study house number twenty two. Um, and if you go to it today, you can they mark like where his camera what like he was standing here when he took the photo. So, look up. It's case study house. We're getting deep in the weeds here again, but case study house number 22, very famous. There was actually 30 of them, um, but 22 is probably the most famous. Uh, it was kind of like at the, right at the beginning of the expansion of LA. Um, and so it was really like 
the first like American suburban um, like expansion. Um, and that kind of set the tone for what suburbs look like um, moving forward from that time. Um, it's been parodied on things like The Simpsons and y you've seen it. Um, and there's a couple pretty famous photos from that set, but maybe maybe the most famous architectural photo um, in American culture. I think that's, is that not Whoa. the house that was used in the uh, Alfred Hitchcock film, North by Northwest? Mm, I don't, maybe? The North by Northwest? I don't. I don't remember that from North by Northwest. That real cantilevered. It's yeah. Out. Uh, maybe it, it, it might have been. It's not it's the one a, that fin finishes up on Mount Rushmore. That's well, yeah, but yeah. Yes, I mean I know North by Northwest, but I don't. Maybe it was. I I don't know. One of the coolest thing, awesome things I've ever done though. I saw North by Northwest at the Paramount with a live orchestra. Oh, that is cool. It was awesome. If you ever get a chance, oh. they do it every now and then. It's amazing. Uh, don't forget Saturday night at the Three Legged Goat. It's certainly yeah. nice to see a bunch of your faces up close. So if you got the time and the inclination, <laughs> it's not back, raining. back, Josh, back. <laughs> uh, love to see you guys. So I wish I could make it out. I, what time was it going to? Um, I think till five eight. To eight. Oh. I'm shooting we a wedding. worked that out the other night. But I won't be able to make it. I have a wedding to shoot. Okay. All right. Wrong state. Ah, look at that. The house north by northwest was a matte painting, not a real house. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I didn't think it was the, that same one. Ah. It, it's similar, but not the same one. Yeah. Cool. Any, awesome, yeah. Any other announcements? Okay, two weeks, we've got uh, an interesting talk on the art of seeing, and I think uh, it's, it's, it's really good, and um, I know you'll like it. Cool. Awesome, awesome. All right, folks. All right. All right, good seeing everybody. Thank you all. Can I throw this out there, Mark? Yeah. The church is talking about starting to meet inside in July. And I'm going to try and probe and find out if they're going to extend that to groups using the building, too. Great. Awesome. Good to know. Good to know. I better yeah, start keep working out so I can carry that darn TV. Mm -hmm. That's right. All right, guys. See y'all. Good, Good night. night. All right. Good night.